In this unit, we're going to talk about the functional group known as amines. So we've been talking about amines um, in different contexts uh, for quite a long time, so you have some familiarity with them. Um, but here we're going to deal with them in detail. So this is the st generic structure of an amine, um, and I just want to compare it to uh, alcohols and ethers, which we've already discussed in detail. So with uh, these oxygen um, functional groups, uh, oxygen has two substituents, and that leaves two lone pairs left over. So amines are analogous um, in the sense that this is an sp3 hybridized nitrogen, um, but because there's only five protons in the nucleus, uh, nitrogen needs three substituents to fulfill its octet, and that leaves only one lone pair left over. So amines are going to have three substituents uh, and one lone pair. Um, and by virtue of the fact that nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen, uh, this lone pair is actually much less tightly bound uh, to the nucleus. And so that means that amine, amines are much more basic uh, than the oxygen um, functional groups. Okay. So we don't deal with nomenclature too much uh, in this course, but there is just one bit um, that we, we have to talk about here. So uh, amines are um, categorized based on how many uh, substituents are on the nitrogen, so how many non-hydrogen substituents. So the simplest amine um, is ammonia, uh, and that, uh, that is going to be the, the functional group with three hydrogens. Um, and then if you put on a single uh, group onto the nitrogen, that's called the primary amine. If you have two, it's a secondary amine, and then three is a tertiary amine. Okay, so primary, secondary, tertiary, based on how many substituents. Um, so uh, this is in contrast to the, uh, the same nomenclature that we used for alcohols. So if you remember, with alcohols, we had the, the simplest alcohol was methanol. Um, and then if we had a, a single substituent on that carbon of the alcohol, that was called the primary alcohol, and then secondary and tertiary alcohols. So with alcohols, we're describing them with the primary, secondary, tertiary um, nomenclature based on how many substituents are on the carbon of the alcohol. With amines, it's, it's that nomenclature based on how many substituents are directly on the nitrogen. So a little bit confusing perhaps, but that's what we're left with. So uh, before we begin talking about uh, the chemistry of amines, I uh, just want to uh, give you a few examples of where amines occur uh, naturally. And we've actually talked about a number of these already. So I might just remind you um, way back in the uh, uh, in introduction to aromatic compounds, we talked about some naturally occurring um, structures. And so here's two that, of course, they have aromatics, but they also have amine functionalities in them. And so this one is, is morphine, this is the structure of morphine, and this one is quinine. Um, and so uh, there are absolutely a, a phenomenal number of naturally occurring complex molecules that uh, incorporate nitrogen. And these are given the, the term alkaloids. So alkaloids are, are natural products that have nitrogen involved. So these are two common ones. Um, of course, there are many others. So uh, nicotine, uh, of course, is a naturally occurring molecule, um, one that, of course, you're familiar with in terms of its addictive properties in cigarettes. Um, and another highly addictive compound, this one we talked about in lecture, is cocaine. So this is the structure of cocaine. Uh, it's, it's this uh, um, molecule that can be made through Robinson's synthesis of tropinone with this double Mannish reaction. Um, and you see that the, um, the reason that cocaine is an alkaloid is because it has this amine group up here. Now, uh, actually, cocaine itself um, is, is going to uh, typically come as a, a protonated uh, compound. So you protonate that basic amine nitrogen and you get to this salt, which is an ammonium salt. So it's the HCl salt um, of this compound. So this is typically how cocaine would be uh, delivered. Um, and it turns out that, uh, that it, in fact, if, if uh, you took cocaine in this form without the, the proton, it would be much more bioavailable. So it would, it would act much more quickly in the body. Um, and this is what's known as the free base of cocaine um, and otherwise uh, termed crack cocaine. So crack cocaine is just the free base of, of regular cocaine. 
Well, of course, amines are extremely important uh, uh, in terms of biology, um, and probably the most important is the fact that uh, amines are, are a principal component of all of the amino acids. Um, so we don't know, need to go through this in detail, um, but here are the 20 amino acids, and they all um, involve, of course, of course, an amine and a carboxylic acid, and that's how they, they link up to form proteins. Uh, many of the uh, neurochemicals, uh, so we've talked about these as well, but many of the neurochemicals that are important um, are actually uh, small molecule amines. And so we, we talked about these again in, in the aromatic section, but we've got things like dopamine, uh, serotonin, epinephrine, uh, melatonin, all of these things that keep our, our brains and our, and our uh, biological cycles working uh, uh, properly. Now it turns out, um, this might not surprise you, that if you um, create derivatives of some of these molecules, like these reward uh, molecules like dopamine, um, you can get to molecules that have similar effects um, and then, then become um, illicit drugs. So things like alpha-methylphenylethylamine, so this very simple molecule here. Um, so if you actually just take a few of these letters, you can create uh, the, the uh, nickname amphetamine. Okay, so amphetamine is, out, is just this molecule, uh, otherwise known as speed. And if you were to just put a single methyl group on that nitrogen, you've got methamphetamine or meth. So uh, if you watch Breaking Bad, uh, this is the molecule that they were cooking up um, in their little trailer. Uh, and then finally, there's many, many derivatives that um, are biologically active and, you know, based on the substitution pattern, they're going to have different, um, uh, you know, psychological effects. Um, and one that you might also know of is, is ecstasy. So sort of compare the structure of ecstasy to, to uh, amphetamine or to, to dopamine, and you can see there's a very strong similarity there. Uh, many uh, you know, legal medicines or legal drugs um, also incorporate uh, amine functionalities. Um, and so, I, I, again, I could have picked very, very many of these, um, and I just picked two that we've already talked about. Uh, so Viagra structure shown here, and you can see here there's this, this tertiary amine functionality hanging off, in addition to a bunch of aromatic nitrogens as well. Um, and then Ritalin it was another one we talked about. Here's a secondary amine uh, piece hanging off there. Now, <clears throat> one thing that uh, you might know about amines, or at least um, relatively small molecule amines, is that they tend to smell absolutely awful. Uh, these, are, these are horrible smelling compounds. Um, perhaps beaten only by the sulfur-based compounds. Um, but uh, amines tend to stink. And, and one of the ones that I'm, you are surely familiar with um, is dimethylamine and trimethylamine. Uh, these are the molecules that are primarily responsible for fish smell or for the sort of um, unpleasant smell of seafood. And the reason that these things arise um, is because uh, many um, crustaceans and, and fish have in their muscle tissue a molecule called trimethylamine anoxide. And what happens is when um, those animals die, bacteria start to act on this TMAO molecule um, and they, they then generate uh, dimethylamine and trimethylamine. And that's, that's that, um, that smell that we, that we dislike. And so we, we pretty much have evolved to dislike these uh, compounds that are generated um, through decay, okay? Um, and so uh, well, what, what do you do about fish smell when you get a piece of fish or, or some calamari or something? Um, and at least what I do is uh, I, I oftentimes take that, that lemon wedge that they serve with it and squirt it all over. Um, and that actually gets rid uh, of, of that fish smell. And the reason is, is because amines are basic and so they will react with um, acids and lemon juice is acidic and so is vinegar. So if you put either of these onto your piece of seafood, um, you will convert those amines into their corresponding ammonium salts. And these things are no longer volatile and they, they don't really have the properties of, of that fish smell or fish taste. And so that's the reason why we're squirting um, acidic, uh, you know, citrus things onto our, our, onto our fish. Well, these two uh, amines smell Terrible, but unfortunately it gets a lot worse. So here's two molecules that are absolutely awful smelling. Um, they're, they're, they're truly um, offensive and evil. Um, and so both of these actually come from the uh, decay of flesh. So they're produced 
Um, this one's produced from uh, the, the uh, decay of, of arginine, so there's a decarboxylation and then a removal of this um, guanidine group. And then this one is actually comes from the, um, the, uh, the decay of, of lysine, so there's just a decarboxylation and, and it gets you uh, to this molecule. Um, so now uh, these molecules, particularly this one here, do have some um, very useful biological activity. So it's produced in the body, um, even in living organisms. Um, but these these go very much out of control once an animal dies, and, and these start to be produced in massive quantities. Um, and it uh, probably explains the name of these two compounds. So this one here is called putrescine, and this one down here is called cadaverine. Um, and that's that's very much um, the the smell uh, that that you would associate with uh, with a rotting carcass. Um, so amines are not so pleasant to, to smell generally, um, but they're of course extremely useful, and so that's why we're going to talk about them.